You're listening to the Bearded Theologians podcast, hosted by Zach Bechtold and Matt Franks. If you'd like to learn more about the Bearded Theologians, you can go online at beardedtheologians.com, where we have past podcasts, blogs, and a couple items for sale. So check us out, beardedtheologians.com. Thank you for listening, and enjoy this week's show. You're listening to the Bearded Theologians podcast, hosted by Matt Franks and Zach Bechtold. Um, so this week we were um, kind of kicking around a couple of ideas and um, one of us had uh, in one of the many ways that we look at scripture and pop up um, first John 13 through 19 and um, some uh, sorry it's first John 3 13 through yes. 19 and uh, I'm gonna let uh, Zach read through that like he uh, traditionally does and so let's listen to that again and that's first uh, John 13 3. 13 through 19. Look at us, five years in, we have traditions. Uh, <laughs> here from 1 John. Uh, Don't be surprised, brothers and sisters, that the world hates you. We know that we have transformed from death to life because we love, we love the brothers and sisters. The person who does not love remains in death. Everyone who hates a brother or sister is murdered, and you know the, that murderers do not have eternal life residing in them. This is how we know love. Jesus laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. But if someone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need but refuses to help, how can the love of God dwell in a person like that? Little children, let's not love with words or speech, but with actions and truth. This is how we will know that we belong to the truth and reassure our hearts in God's presence. Matt, when you hear that, that's uh, often um, I've, it's at least the verse I'm familiar with, uh, or a section of scripture I'm familiar with. Uh, you know, how do we treat one another? You know, when you when you love or hate a brother and sister, here's here's the results of it, right? Uh, but when you hear that once again, what uh, what comes to mind for for you? You know, I. I guess it's kind of the core of my theology is love and doing love and practicing that. However, that is, um, you know, that there are different ways that that can be done. And it's not just um, uh, our faith is about doing. It's about doing uh, and being connected to God. And um, I think far too often we've um, really messed up and have made it about knowing all the facts. Um, you and I both come from the Bible Belt. And so like we truly have a full, have seen that come to fruition. Like, you know, people get more concerned about knowing everything in the Bible, but yet like when it comes to practicing love, that is like the furthest thing away from their mind, uh, whatever is going on in their life, like whatever, you know, like, and so like that, if you ask me, like, I would much rather your theology show love, show love, than to quote all the verses that have love in it and, um, and, and practice it, like legitimately practice it. I, th I think that's where people get hung up is the practice of it. Um, and so like, to me, that's, as I was thinking about that, like the, the doing of love is, is important. Yeah. And I, and I think that's what this comes, comes back to, um, in, in, in verse 17 there, but if someone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need and refuses to help, how can the love of God dwell within that person? And, and like you love is the central thing to, to my theology. And it's not just knowing like these verses and knowing that Jesus and, and God and the Holy spirit call us to love, but actually moving on that, um, actually leaving the space and being willing to move and act and, and love in, in, in that verse 17 talking about, well, what we, you know, it's just, if we have stuff, but don't love what's, what's the point. Right. Um, uh, but I think you, I think you hit the nail on the head talking about, we can know all the things, right? We can know all the right things to say. We can have all the right words. We can have all the right answers, but who, who really cares um, if we know the answer is love, but don't show it. Um, and I think that's what the core of this, um, this passage gets to is it doesn't really matter if, if you 
if you're not acting and showing and living in this love that, that Christ offers, then we really aren't. Um, and, and we're just deceiving ourselves and we, we have, we have hate, we have discontent, we have apathy, we have all of the things that aren't love in our hearts. Uh, and that's what we act with. And, and so I'm, I'm right along with you. I, I often preach a sermon or, or, or invite people to consider what, um, are you preaching or living out the gospel of Jesus or are you living out the gospel of being right and which one are we called to, to live out? Uh, and it's often not being right. Well, it's like that sermon that we were talking about before the, um, uh, before we really hit record was what does your love look like? Um, and I can't remember the Bishop's name it escapes my mind. And I, my day, you know, I, um, but you know, that kind of has been ringing in my head ever since I've heard that from her. Uh, what does your love look like in like, you know, like we can preach what love looks like. We can talk about it till we're blue in the face, but like, if we're not doing it, like it will show. And I think that that's, um, if one critique of the church, the church that I have, it doesn't matter denomination, affiliation, association, whatever crap you want to call your connection, uh, whatever that may be, um, the practice of love, if it doesn't show, you really need to really go back and really dive into what, not only what Jesus was saying, but a bulk of the New Testament was leaning towards acting out in love. Um, and a, and a, and a, it's a sacrificial communal love that has no bounds or no, like, it's not about coming to my level. It's about letting me come to your level and getting to know you and care for you and what your hurts and, you know, what, you know, um, and I, I think that that's the thing that we have to wrestle with. Not only what does your love look like, but like, are you actually loving your neighbor by getting to know them and helping them whenever they're alongside the road? Mm -hmm. um and we talked about that a little bit last week about doing and, and i think that that's i think that's what a lot gets lost in in translation with faith is the doing part right well and in in we've just qualified who can do what right yeah. um from just i don't know all throughout history it's not a new thing that we've been doing but um yeah it, it, we have and and therefore when you qualify who can do what, you, you get a lack of action. Uh, you fall into that apathy of it's not my job, it's somebody else's. And here we are. Uh, and I think it pulls back into that verse 18. And I, I love any time uh, anybody in scripture says or starts with, look here, uh, listen. And, and in this one, it's little children, which for me draws you in of, oh, what, what do we, what's next, right? Um, and it says, let's not love with our words or speech, but with action and truth, uh, and just naming, it's not enough to say it. It's not enough to know the right words, but it's the action truth that we put, uh, that we put out there in the world, getting to know your neighbor, helping the stranger, uh, loving those who are hurting, loving yourself when you're hurting, um, and just being and creating the space that you need to through, through love, through the action and through truth. Um, and sometimes, I mean, and this, I mean, it says it, action and truth. It's not what you say, it's what you do, how you do it. And then often uh, it's that argument between listening and talking, right? Sometimes we just need to listen and not say anything. Uh, and I think this points, points to that's how love is so impactful, is sometimes just as being present. Well, and I think that that's where, like, um, the action leads to truth and like, mm -hmm. how else are we going to know what love looks like? How else are we going to know about our neighbor? If we actually like, if we don't do anything with our neighbor, which I think has been a problem uh, in our society that we don't really get to know our neighbors and, you know, we can point to our neighborhoods as a good example of that. And, um, and how we've closed off ourselves from our neighbors, like legitimately neighbors, like not knowing our neighbors and, um, and I think that that's vital and important that like, if we're going to take those steps, I mean, it can start simple in our backyard or like, if you know, someone's hurting, um, you know, find ways that you can take care of them, you know, and 
there are ways that that can be done. Like, I mean, I think it's just about asking, you know, Hey, what do you need? You know, like, like I'm, I'm sitting here, you know, uh, a week out after surgery. And, um, that's been like, that's a great question. That's the, and the question I know that they genuinely care for me is like, what do you need? Um, and so like, uh, you know, like if I say nothing, you know, Hey, have you, do you need any snacks? Well, I mean, I can always use snacks. I mean, that can, you know, that just never goes away. But I do mean, you need <laughs> them? I mean, <laughs> no, 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 like need, yes. Want is a whole other story. That's right. That's right. Uh, um, but you know, um, you know, and I think that that's it. Like just getting to know the person and, and like that, cause then that will lead to finding truth. And, mm-hmm. and I think, um, we're so caught up on that, that um let love be your guide and you'll find truth i mean i really believe that um and and if you really love without you know um expectation it, it really changes things mm-hmm. um, so uh is that anything else as we bring this to a close today no, just go out there and and do the thing, do the things, do the things, uh, do the love, share the share the love, uh, put that into action and see how it makes difference makes a difference in the world around you. Yeah, um, I think that's a good place to land for us today. And so, I want to encourage you to go to our website at beardedtheologians.com and check out all of our all of our great content. Five years worth of content now, um, lots of great stuff, lots of. Um, uh, stuff that you can buy and purchase. Uh, it's Valent- getting close to Valentine's Day. So if you've got a, a theologian who likes beards in some way, shape, or form, you know, it's a great gift. Um, you know, uh, it's close to those graduations and ordination times as well. And, uh, you know, that's always a good time to purchase a bearded theologian's gear for that. Um, we may even try to do a little contest. Uh, I'm, I've got a couple of the old, the original stickers laying around, I think, somewhere. Um, I'm sure we can bust out some of those originals uh and and maybe do some kind of contest with that um you know um we want to encourage you to take care of yourself wear a mask um you know wash your hands practice safe distancing and 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 you know please do those things and so for the bearded theologians i'm matt franks Uh, i'm zach bechtold thanks for checking us out first guys i want you to subscribe and like this video and put that from push that thumbs up Thank you for listening to the Bearded Theologians podcast. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share on all social media outlets. You can check out old episodes and more information at beardedtheologians.com. Thanks for checking us out.